Oh. Oh, yeah. You consent to being recorded. I consent fully and wholeheartedly. Okay, yeehaw. So, welcome back. Uh, today, oh, that sounds so YouTuber cringe. Hi. Oh, I'm not Smash that say. like button. Smash that like button. Um, if I get a thousand subscribers, I will, um, steal my grandma's 401k. But, <laughs> Today, this is my co-founder, Valkyrie. Uh, I realize whenever I'm in YouTube videos that I always say, I talked to Valkyrie, or I did this Valkyrie, <laughs> or I need to text Valkyrie. But I've never actually introduced her, and I really love her, and I admire her. And she is one of the most ambitious and smartest and kindest people that I know. And so we usually work together, and most of our calls are about like work, or sometimes we're on Roblox, but today... I just wanted us to talk about kind of like both having witchy-esque mothers and what that has kind of done for our ambition and how that kind of has changed and shaped our view of the world and then also like whatever else comes up. But that is pretty much it. And Valkyrie, if you would like to add anything or throw anything onto that, feel free. Yeah, I mean, first off, thank you for having me on. Big fan. I think I was like, like the third or fourth subscriber so i'm here for for the long haul um amanda is amazing for everyone that knows her doesn't know her you can all confirm just from like listening to her talk <laughs> um but yeah i mean like this topic is just like super interesting and i i've been exposed to it from a very young age and Ooh. it has definitely like transferred over in terms of just my regular day-to-day life and even like subconsciously there are still some things that I do that I, being someone in like science and tech and having like an atheist dad and a dad mm. that is like very swinging in the version of like there's no magic nothing mm. that isn't real exists kind of like like yeah. nothing supernatural exists stuff like that um it's very interesting dichotomy growing up with both sides of it and, and seeing where where you swing so mm. I don't know. Why don't you start us off with something you've been thinking about? (laughs) I was just looking at you and I was like, what? What am I getting the vibes of? And I was like, oh my gosh, you have twilight lighting. Like you have the perfect blue glow from the first twilight. Oh my god. It's actually very ethereal. I'm very into it. Um, Also the blue. The the blue blue light. Do you want to show our t-shirts that we're wearing today? Mine says, I run for my six pack. And, and the ironic says, thing is, I literally did run a half marathon for this, but it, it makes <laughs> it seem like I'm just like, I'm not a runner. <laughs> and then our shirts are very on brand for us personally. And then my <laughs> shirt says, I know HTML, how to meet ladies. That's um, perfect. <laughs> I remember classic. So yeah, I don't know. I don't even really know where to kind of just like start with this. I'll kind of let you... um like shape how deep you want the conversation to go or like how much you want to talk about your mom and I'll kind of like if you don't want to like answer a question or if you kind of want to change the subject we can do that and then the bear will come in for lighthearted moments of brevity um (laughs) but I was like I was fixing up my tiny house today hold on I have to turn on my um my skin um microwaver so I was like (laughs) I was cleaning up my tiny house today and I've had this vision where I'm like I want it to be like an evil layer in the woods like I want it to be very like industrial very like space themed very much like if a Gen Z TikTok e-girl got loose in the forest and found a pristine airstream with a bunch of hacking equipment in there what would it be Mm -hmm. and so I finished that today and I was looking at it and I was like oh my god this looks like the X-Files office. And <laughs> I was like thinking about that because my mom, when we were growing up, always watched Ghost Adventures with me. She loved Ghost Adventures. She loved Zach Bagan. She really wanted to go to the Haunted Museum in Las Vegas. Um, yeah. where you are. So I just found that like, I just found that super interesting. And my favorite, like, my favorite thing about, our relationship was just having these moments of like skepticism and these moments of wonder of like what truly is out there and like what is truly kind of like shaping our lives and shaping our trajectory 
And I think for me, the answer is like, I don't necessarily know if I believe like in a God or if I believe in aliens or like what that just is. Like I, I'm thinking as of right now, the answer is no. But I do think really early on, you know, she just had this way of doing stuff that at the time I didn't like necessarily understand and I didn't think were cool. But in hindsight, I understand it was her way to try to exert control through her understanding of the world, even if I didn't understand and I didn't see the world that way. And so I'm just kind of like thinking back and I'm thinking about all of these qualities that I originally was really scared to get I have gotten but in my own way like a very healthy skepticism of the government a very healthy skepticism of the tech industry um the constant hubris to think that you're smarter than the entire government and all these other things (laughs) I inherited from both my parents but yeah I don't know that was just really like what I was thinking about and I was like well how how did that turn into our ambition because you are also the like most ambitious person I know Valkyrie wants to open a quantum time lab with her boyfriend future fiance Psalm and (laughs) I just think I just think it's so interesting I just think she's so fascinating and I'm also like the only person I know that has just these crazy ass ambitions like like a lot of people in the startup industry it's like oh like I would like to get to like x amount of money and then maybe do this or this like maybe do a charity But, like, a couple of years ago, I got drunk with um, someone who used to work at Astra, Ben Henderson, and we were living in the same apartment together. And it was the night of the Ukraine-Russia war. And I was, like, freaking out and crying. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to deal with the war. I don't know what I want to do. Like, all these things. And Ben is British. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? Someone get this (laughs) drunk girl to bed. And so, like, we go upstairs. And he's like, what do you want to do? And I was like you know, I think I actually want to teach AI how to care and love for humans. <laughs> like, that's what I want to do. And I'm, like, crying on the floor about the Ukraine war. And everybody else in the apartment is, like, <laughs> and I'm just, like, I can fix robots. I can fix the alignment issue of artificial intelligence. So <laughs> I love that we both have hubris. And yeah, both had these, like, witchy kind of like mystical moms who just had these really interesting views of their world and tried to make sense of it in the rituals and in the ways that they could yeah I will toss off to you for extra thoughts yeah I mean so like I guess like a little bit of context on like my mom and and how I was growing up but you know I mentioned this like kind of like juxtaposition of my dad being super atheist super anti- like he thought magic and supernatural stuff was like cool in theory but it was like yeah god doesn't exist none of this exists like just very point blank realism is is the thing and my mom on the other hand was like very like eastern european like voodoo magic like very superstitious kind of believed in like a like a christian god but didn't really like wasn't really religious like it like just thought there was something else out there and I remember asking her questions about, like, if she believes there's a God. Mm-hmm. And I think she might have said yes. Um, but it was, like, a very loose yes. Like, like I think there is something or someone. Um, whether or not it's, like, a Christian God, I don't know. But, you know, etc. Um, and so, like, she would do things, like, like, on Christmas Eve, we would all have to stand in front of a single candle. And if mm-hmm. we could see our shadow, that meant we would be there for Christmas. If it was, like partially like we could see our shadow that means we were going to be sick for christmas and if we didn't see our shadow at all that means we were going to be dead for christmas (laughs) she always used to like she was like i have to see everyone's shadow like don't fucking like i have to see everyone and so she would like go one by one and like make sure um and there was other stuff like like we couldn't hug or kiss anyone like in a doorway because that was bad Mm -hmm. luck uh if something bad happened to us she would do this like like kiss on our forehead blow it away kiss on our forehead blow it away like this whole like little like ritual kind of thing um mm. so I grew up with just like a lot of that you know, just a lot of um little things like that and then as I got into more of just like the the shitty teenager like puberty phase where it's like I know everything and and I'm special mm. and blah, 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 um I I started to just like kind of break it down more and I went through like a very atheist phase just like mm like screw everyone who thinks religion is like a thing like they're all stupid I know everything 
because my dad knows everything and I Mm. agree with him (laughs) yeah so that was like very much the sentiment for me so like it was also during this time where I just resented anything like spiritual because I was like that's stupid like how could anyone (laughs) how could anyone Mm. ever believe in any of this so I would like rebel against my mom in a way and just be like 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 why do you do that like why are you making me do this and like Mm. just just you know like classic just like teenager things where it's like you don't understand anything Mm -hmm. um and it wasn't until I like fully moved out and like got a little bit more independence that I started to really like see where people were coming from and and that whole like hyper atheist thing wore off and I, I I would say I'm I'm not religious I'm closer to atheists, but I would say I'm just, like, more spiritual now. Um, Like, I think there has to be something out there that maybe it's explained by science, but something that underlines everything that we know, because how does math work the way it does? How does the world work the way it does? We're all conscious somehow. Can't explain that. You know what I mean? So it's it's just stuff like that where that's where I lie now. Mm -hmm. And I, like, specifically remember um, with my boyfriend, Zom, um, just like on one of our dates when I was in LA he like goes to we were at this like uh Japanese like uh restaurant and he goes Mm. to hug me in the middle of a doorway and I instinctively moved inside like I didn't even like really like understand what had happened and I just Mm. instinctively in my brain I was like no like (laughs) and and I just like moved inside he was like like are you good I was like yeah (laughs) but like yeah (laughs) <laughs> but I didn't really like have any control of that and so yeah. I feel like a lot of that stuff is kind of just like subconsciously rooted in my brain mm-hmm. um and I think it's so cool now because like for the people that don't know and I'm assuming multiple people probably don't but my mom passed away this year mm-hmm. and you know obviously like relatively young I'm relatively on my family everything and it's like cool to me that I like have those parts of her like just subconsciously ingrained in me where it's just like like the other day I like hugged someone in the doorway and I immediately felt like shit (laughs) it's like like, damn it (laughs) there goes another one and she's like I fucking told you I know literally I I was just like I was like man like I should have just like but then it would have to be a whole thing but I should be able to just like explain like yeah I just don't do that even if it is silly just because it keeps my mom in my brain um but yeah I'll, I'll end there just very spiritual yeah. and anti-spiritual household that I've kind of adopted multiple parts of I think it's interesting because you rubbed off on me a little bit last night when I was like getting my house ready for bed I was like I need to unplug these lights because I'm scared they're going to start a fire and I remember yeah. like, you taught me how to do that in Oakland and I was like mm-hmm. I was like oh my god fire <laughs> oh so, that's that's very cute but yeah I think that's like It's really interesting and I kind of want to delve a little bit more into the topic of like control, ambition, your kind of like sense of optimism Um, and for y'all who don't know I'm like I'm the CTO of Bora Valkyrie's the CEO. She's very more person strategy business development minded. I'm more pessimistic like tech like graphic design like really anything um, in terms of software minded. And so one of the really beautiful things to me about Valkyrie is just her continued optimism and her continued belief that like the future is going to be beautiful and we're going to get there. And I wanted to ask you how you developed that and like if the kind of like spiritual like uh, the spiritual kind of like thing that you were talking on talking about in your household like shaped or molded that in any way because I know mine Mm -hmm. definitely did but in the exact inverse yeah. opposite way. so I think it would just be interesting to compare and contrast yeah I mean I definitely think it did and and I do want to say like a good portion of my optimism is absolutely privilege like I mm. like I can recognize and I and I try to every day of just like like I'm I'm in the best position that mm. probably the majority of women can like hope to be in at my age in the richest country in the world like I still have like my like my family together like obviously my mom like that's probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do and will probably have to do in the in my lifetime um but I I think my optimism first and foremost came from a sense of privilege it was just this idea and I was like reflecting on this um a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. where 
nothing really bad had happened to me yeah. um up until my mom mm-hmm. and it and, and you know like it was kind of just like once I started actually working and caring about my work um mm-hmm. just like apart from high school and like actually doing internships and stuff um it always worked out and yeah. then my mom got cancer and in my head I was like oh well of course she's gonna make it because mm-hmm. of, like my mom makes it and that's just what happens in my life because I hadn't experienced anything else mm-hmm. and um that was something that like I know initially when when we started working together that I was like I was like yeah like everything's gonna be fine and like it's positive mm-hmm. and whatever and mm-hmm. it it honestly like blew my mind that not everyone was the same way <laughs> yeah um and like so when when my mom passed it was mm-hmm. kind of one of those things where it was like my grieving started then because everyone yeah. else in the house because I was traveling and like I didn't have as much of a sense of how bad it had gotten and then like she was on hospice and I just like slowly saw all of my hope for like a continuous like optimistic positive future dwindle mm-hmm. yeah. and it like it was the first thing where I was like fuck like not everything is positive anymore and bad shit can happen and that sucks <laughs> yeah. and so like I've definitely struggled with that as of like recently because you know we're fundraising and like there's there's a lot of just like stress and anxiety that yes I've dealt with before like in different capacities but I've never been as as like mentally unstable as as I have been and like obviously I'm managing that differently now but it I had to recognize and just be like yeah it's because thank you <laughs> like, so just like yeah it's because yeah. now I know that bad shit can happen and now bad shit has happened to me and it's much more real when you mm-hmm. experience it yourself and so like going back to like being spiritual I think that did give me a sense of like yeah everything will work out you know mm-hmm. and like with with my mom we were we were like this with like the witch stuff it would be just like she was like I had a dream about like this thing would happen to you and then like something mm-hmm. vaguely in the same realm would happen I'd be like oh my god like you're right <laughs> and we we just yeah. always she would always tell me like you know Valkyrie we're witches and like mm-hmm. all the stuff and I think we had we had like the I, I guess what a like the first child like first daughter mother bond like mm-hmm. should have been I, I would say like yeah. we had we had that and I think that did carry over in a sense because I was like oh yeah like everything works out because we're witches and like and like Mm -hmm. there there is nothing has bad bad has happened to me yet um so yeah long tangent but yeah I think that was so beautiful and I really appreciate you just like I'm gonna set him right here hope he doesn't like get cooked uh (laughs) I really appreciate you just like sharing because I just I just find you always so interesting and I just find it so fascinating and we like the first time we ever met we went to Chipotle and we sat outside in the fucking windiest day in San Francisco on top of a hill and you were like do you think that trauma like makes you a better founder or a worse founder and I just like I just think these little dichotomies because I think we have both gone through the same things under like slightly different circumstances and I think we really just make two halves of a non-mentally ill person together so yeah (laughs) thank you for that kind of like thank you for that context and I think um for me a little bit of background is my mom is still alive she's just not in my life um and my parents both grew up and they or not they both grew up, but my parents, when they got married, both ran one business together. And so when I was super young, my dad ran the newspaper distribution business in the San Bernardino Mountains, which is like a little area in Southern California, um, in what would affectionately be called as buttfuck nowhere. Like the schools, the schools yeah. were pretty bad. Um, there was not a lot of upwards mobility going on there. Um, and it was just this really like, really um unflinchingly American town where there was a lot of like opioid like drug stuff happening and like through my dad I was able to see like the realities of running a business and like he for the first like I would say for a big part of my like toddler years like he would be waking up and working from 5 p.m 
to 9 a.m. the next day and he would sleep during the day and then he would go work at night because when you work in the newspapers it all happens at like midnight slash like 4 a.m. and then you add in snowstorms and you add in all of these logistics and I remember like one of the first things that I would do as a kid is we had this like garage and we had to count the coins to see how many newspapers we sold and my dad would put me down there in a little cult and it was cold as fuck and he'd be like count these coins baby and I did um and so really early on you know my parents showed me the value of hard work and then also the realities of work and they were also very highly superstitious people and highly conspiratorial people um and when Obama got elected they got me a shirt that says, oh my gosh, my dad just texted me, asked me how am I, uh, <laughs> ironically, but they got me a shirt that had Obama's face with the Joker makeup painted on it, and it said, I'm going to steal your candy as tax money, kids, and I wore that. And oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> so, so, like, my parents were both very, like, political and we were living in this area that was like very rural and there was a lot of like very realistic devastation and economic issues happening up there and like the school system was terrible and so when my parents got a divorce I moved down to Palm Springs Coachella Valley area in what is a significantly more affluent area and my mom is like she is very religious just in a lot of different ways like when we grew up like I would go to um shoot I like a, a it's like a sea church it's not catholic like a cavalry church mm -hmm. um and then like she decided my grandma found out that they actually ran from um the germans in austria uh, a couple of years into my life like my grandma went up to her attic and found letters from my great grandma talking about how she hid out from the nazis in a church and then word got to my mom and my mom was like i am jewish and passover and all these other things oh but my also, gosh there was like no like there was no um like holidays it was just really interesting like she did not like halloween she thought halloween was demonic when i was 12 she told me that santa was an anagram for satan and we weren't allowed to have christmas trees in the house so she was like she was like suspicious but like flat earther like everybody is a lizard um yeah levels of suspicious and i'm gonna say this and i don't mean to make fun of her but i mean for this to like provide like it just context to the way of how she thinks um and I don't want anybody to be like oh my gosh Amanda's mom is so stupid because I think her her view of the world is interesting and she has her own reasons for thinking the things that she does but in one of the last dinners we ever had together with me and my dad and her before I stopped talking to my mom we were talking about flat earth and population and my mom said I when I get on a plane I think the earth is flat and I think there's only about a hundred thousand people on earth because I can't see that many people and I I was like at the time obviously like that's a terrible thing to hear but like with adulthood and with maturity and with consideration I really admire the guts and the confidence that you have to have to say things contrary to what the rest of everybody else says um and both of my parents gave that to me like my dad was very much like fuck the government like I will not give you my ID like all these <laughs> things like when he came up to visit me in Washington a couple of weeks ago he had to give the clerk his store ID to, for him to buy alcohol and she was like can I scan your ID and he was like no you cannot and he was going to walk out of the door without his beer <laughs> if she scanned his ID. And so my parents very much like taught me that work ethic is like the number one thing you should really care about, but also like always be suspicious. And so when I was like 10, I started getting into circles that I shouldn't have. And I joined Anonymous as a 10 year old. And I started trying to hack companies and I started trying to do all this crazy shit because I was like, fuck the man you know like this is what it is and my parents were very much like yeah like don't don't listen to the government don't listen to big tech like all these different things and so I definitely got that just like 
very innate skepticism and that very innate like healthy and sometimes unhealthy doses of just like bless you <laughs> thank you <laughs> i'm sorry that was so dramatic um yeah just like these very interesting um views on the world and views on business and all these other things and so that's kind of like my thing and I think part of um I think part of just like what motivates me and part of just like what keeps me going is just like my mom really had this innate sense of like I can do a lot of stuff and it can change xyz circumstance and in hindsight um it's clear that a lot of these things are like obviously not going to work but it's more about the belief that you can change something and I feel like that's something that Gen Z is really missing right now it's something I've been really missing where it's like I talk to a lot of my friends and especially like activism wise like most of them don't feel like their political affiliations hold like any meaning they don't really feel like anything is really getting changed like the economy is super shit and nobody really feels like they can buy a house and like even in Silicon Valley, it's like there is a little bit of like the AI kind of like re, not like re-emergence, but just this kind of like very specific pulse of like AI is the moment right now, right? So there is kind of like this move towards progress, but I feel like overall, a lot of tech workers have been laid off and we're no longer in the era of like Google perks, like everything is beautiful. Like we are in the era where it's like tech is not just like, it's not just this place you go to escape corporate culture. Like now it is corporate culture. And a lot of our mm -hmm. greatest minds, like I saw this tweet and it was like the greatest minds of our time are working at Uber, trying to figure out how to build these like, um, build these like price gouging algorithms instead of like working on really interesting stuff in computer science and product and I thought that was like such a good point so mm -hmm. I think for me like looking back as an adult like her being as old as she was like 45 not that she was like well she's like old but like her being so far into her life and still having the belief that like she could change stuff and she could make an impact even if I didn't think that was true I still like I really admire and to be honest I'm kind of jealous of that attitude and of that ability to be like what I will do can change the course of things because I think especially after I left mental health advocacy I really lost the sense of that and I really mm -hmm. like I would go and I would talk about mental health and I would like do all these different things and it never really resulted in social impact and my dad is going to love this story some people might not, but I advised for PBS on one of their films um, that Ken Burns did. I don't remember exactly what it was called. I'm so sorry, Godiva. Um, <laughs> or I'm so sorry, PBS. Sorry, I, I mixed them up. I'm tired. But pretty much, like, they did a movie. Oh, my gosh. We have 10 minutes, and then we're going to switch over. But yeah. they had a movie about mental health. They invited me to the premiere in Washington, D.C. because I was an advisor and basically I was just like, here are some things that you need to know before you release it to the public, like tech-wise. And when we got there and Nancy Pelosi was like, was um, at the event giving like a speech before they screened the film. And that was the same night that Roe v. Wade was repealed. And I always think about like, you know, a lot of people were like working their ass off for like mental health legislation to be fixed and changed and nothing happened and then the same night that she gave the speech about like mental health is important like the mental health of millions of women's just surrounding their care just like yeah like I don't know so that really um that really polished my pickle <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I mean it's yeah. it's really interesting like what do you think um about like your mom's upbringing or like what she went through yeah. got her to that place where she could be like yeah I have the power to change my own my own circumstances because uh, like for yeah. for me I, I know it came from a place of privilege um and for my mom I think it came from a place of like like she she believed all of these things because it explained things that were like out of her control 
Yeah. And that's kind of how she found control is like in these little things that you can do in the day to manipulate like yeah. the good luck and the bad luck. Like when you feel powerless or you mm-hmm. feel like you you don't have as much of a as much of a say. Like my mom would always say, like, I'm gonna like cure diseases, I'm gonna like do this, this and that. But she never really took like very many steps towards that. And so mm-hmm. I think like in in a kind of like different way, she yeah. used her superstitions to kind of justify that she could change things without really like taking the steps to do like the big thing she talked about mm-hmm. almost as like a as some kind of some kind of like force field that that kept her safe without like mm-hmm. without moving uh out of that so I'm curious like what you think what you think the difference is there well I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be really respectful in the way that I yeah. say this because I don't want because I know my mom is on YouTube uh and I don't want her to be like uh, here's my daughter talking shit about me for 40 minutes straight but <laughs> I think yeah. um, it is my personal belief I have been diagnosed on the autism spectrum um, after I got my diagnosis I looked at a lot of the autism symptoms that a lot of people perceive to be very negative and very bad and I realized that my mom exhibited a lot of them and I realized also that I had been viewing her actions from a completely different light uh, I love my mom. Um, she was a little antisocial. She was a little, um, she was a little, um, as the TikTokers would say, Delulu. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, my dad has a lot of stories that he, you know, likes to tell of her where, you know, before they got married, she went up to him and she was like, I don't want a diamond ring. I don't want a blood diamond. And he proposed with an emerald. Um, or like he worked really hard to like buy her a Mercedes Benz and then he bought her a brand new Mercedes SUV like when their business was really rolling and she fucking hated it and they traded it for a Subaru so she did the stuff where it's like where it's like oh that was a social cue girly um and I see that now as my belief that she does have autism and she kind of sees the world the same way that I do and I think this is something that's really interesting. People who have autism have a really hard time feeling connected. They have a very hard experience with feeling like an alien. Like, I feel like an alien all of the time. I feel like it's very hard for me to understand, like, socially where I land with stuff. And I very much need, like, a clear, like, you did well in this conversation. So there's a lot of aspects to autism that pretty much, like, long story short, lend in social isolation and when you have a brain that thinks so differently and you feel so socially isolated you are vulnerable to a lot of different groups like white supremacy groups like there's a lot of white there's a lot of like incels or there's a lot of autistic guys that are incels that are white supremacists that are like in these very alt-right spaces because they don't have the social skills or they don't have necessarily the support that they need to be able to make it through life and it is my opinion personally that my mom had a very hard time um socially growing up and she's also incredibly smart she is a forensic accountant she runs her own smoothie shop like she is she is one of the smartest business women that I know and I was really lucky to grow up with two amazing business role models like that who shaped my career but I also think when you're that smart and you're that unable to connect socially, you will go to groups that make you feel like you're special. Like I do that with startups. I'm like, I want to feel special. I want to feel like I can change the world. I want to feel like I have like this ability to make stuff happen. And my chosen path for that has been startups and nonprofit work and like software development, like that kind of space. And I feel like her chosen path for that was online conspiracy theories and online stuff and I feel like a lot of like her confidence comes from the fact that like she believes these things that I think are um to say the very least incorrect um and it makes her feel like if the government is like you know very conspiratorial and if the earth is flat like she knows something that no one else knows and that's justification Mm -hmm. for everything else that she's gone through and I feel that same way too like about like if I just like if I just make this startup happen or if I just like become the most like the most impactful like software developer and if I just like completely dominate 
the space, it's going to automatically make up for all of the social sins that I've committed just by existing. And I feel like she has a lot of them as well. So that is my answer, but I'm sure she would probably have a different take on it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that is interesting. I, I feel like I feel the same way in terms of kind of just like finding things to be a part of. Um, and like, like with startups, like I definitely relate to the fact of like, you know, we're we're solving this problem. We're in insurance, and I like go to these events, and I'm like, and I'm like, I get it. <laughs> no. I'm the one that gets it, and I want to explain it to everyone else to see who else can be on the same wavelength, mm-hmm. and that's how I can be like finding people I, I think that's also like why I find like quantum so interesting because mm-hmm. I feel like the people that want to get it I'm like oh that's that's where I want to be because those yeah, people yeah. are going to hear it out no matter how ridiculous they think it is because it's an interesting space um so it definitely is interesting and and like kind of tying it back to like spirituality I I like the idea that we are descended from witches I, like, really love the fact that, uh, and it, it kind of comes in waves, right? Like, I yeah. I go through periods of thinking, like, oh, like, I have my mom, like, around my neck, and I'm, like, mm-hmm. maybe if I hold it, like, she's actually, like, listening to me. Or, like, maybe mm-hmm. every time I wear it, like, she can, like, sense me and know that I'm, like, okay. And then, like, I'm a big, like, person, that, like, I talk to myself a lot, and mm-hmm. now it's less that I'm talking to myself and more that I'm talking to her. Yeah. And... Every time I hear that, like, no matter how illogical I really think it is, I there's always, like, that really big piece of me that's, like, she can hear me, though. Like, yeah. like that's it's just because, like, like that's, that's how I've always thought. And, like, that's how mm. it will continue to be because I, I will it to be. Um, yeah. And I think that's that's a part of why I think I am as, like, ambitious as I try to be. Mm. Because in my head, I'm, like, I, I can will it into existence if I really want to, if I, if I really try hard enough, Mm -hmm. um, this can be a thing. And like, at at least, I know we only have a minute left, but, um, Mm -hmm. like at least in the beginning of, of us, like working together, I was, Mm -hmm. I was like, if I, if I just believe hard enough, like it'll be good. And you were like, Mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't work that way. And I, I felt like (laughs) so offended. (laughs) I was, I was like I was like but like I believe it will though mm-hmm. and but like honestly like I am just like insanely overly optimistic and like that's why you were saying like we're like two two pieces of like the halves yeah. and I think like you definitely balance out my like crazy optimistic like <laughs> just look at the big picture don't look at the details yeah. and like and I'm over like, here like realistic the CIA I'm just, like, killed JFK the CIA <laughs> killed JFK <laughs> Yeah, like, like, it's just, it's just, like, such an interesting balance, and it's not mm-hmm. to say that you're, like, like, negative all the time, it's just yeah. that you have a way different outlook about, like, or not way differently, you just have a different outlook about how things could go, and, like, what the different yeah. stakeholders are in every problem, mm-hmm. and it's, it's a good balance, I will say. It, and and- so, Valkyrie, you were just saying, uh, opposites kind of like my more pessimistic yeah. view your more optimistic view I 100% agree um I just wrote an essay on medium about how um basically my ambition got beat out with beat out of me with a stick pretty much mm-hmm. and I feel like that's actually one of my favorite parts about you and like there was this um there was this YouTube video that was on Twitter and it was of a mom talking to her son and she was like, when I look at you, I see myself without the weight of the world. And I think that about you a lot. Like, um, mm-hmm. I just really love that you do have this optimism because I definitely wish I had more of it sometimes. And um, I just always see the world through everything bad that's ever going to possibly happen, which is great if you want to be really anxious and stressed out all the time. But it's not great when you're trying to pretty much... Um, rebuild an entire industry or rethink the way that an entire industry works so yeah I just wanted to let you continue on that thought and add anything else if you wanted to yeah I mean like with that I I feel like I I I'm very used to just seeing things in my own way and I like some of the things that you bring up when when we're in like stand-up or when we're 
like in calls and conversations I'm just like yeah I would have never thought to ask that but that's like so good to have that perspective and I think it's just because you're able to like go through all these different scenarios and kind of like work through it um where whereas for me I'm just like yeah this is and this happens it's good but you're like yeah but like what about these little subsections within this (laughs) like like actually stop to think about it for a second (laughs) so I I like to think of it as like less pessimistic and more just like realistic um yeah I'm definitely more like in dreamland like Mm. the witches will take care of it for me you know like (laughs) like I have a they're all aligned with me so that's all I need um but that but that's why I think we work so well together and and, like we really do complement each other so you're the best and number one biggest Valkyrie stan k-pop I only know I only know v-pop Valkyrie pop (laughs) that's what I'm really a fan of (laughs) oh my god that's either Valkyrie pop or like Viking pop it's just like like throat singing like crazy bass whenever I tell people like oh yeah my co-founder Valkyrie they're like your co-founder what and I'm yeah. like her name is Valkyrie <laughs> yeah that's I I get that I got that a lot at um like the most recent like Red Sky conference I went to it's just like <laughs> oh like like what is that like mythology and I'm like I, I'm like yes it is <laughs> we should have you dress up like a viking at the next I have the <laughs> helmet I think I have a helmet somewhere here um but yeah the be really too cool. on brand I think too on brand you'd be like fuck i'm trying to come up with a viking pun right now and i can't do it but um that's a hard one for sure bike out of the fire no more valhalla in our forests i don't know we'll work on it we'll (laughs) we'll workshop that so yeah i would say and maybe we can talk a little bit more about startup stuff i have no formal agenda we can talk about whatever you want to talk about i just wanted to know um you know as someone who is not that not that you're just getting started but as someone who is growing up in the startup industry and is kind of like seeing all of these things like what have you been seeing what are like some things that you're interested in what are you thinking about like what's what's going on in your noggin because I come on here and I'm like you guys this is my 100% opinion about open AI <laughs> so I want to give you the chance to voice your dirty laundry or to talk shit or to be really nice and appraise people and so on and so forth. So this is your moment, girl. <laughs> you know, I I was thinking about this today. Um, so like I I'm part of this like group called the Null Society or TKS. Um, mm. And I always say like, it sounds really pretentious to be like, I'm a part of the Knowledge Society. Like, <laughs> It just like yeah. from from here on out it will be known as TKS. Um, but uh, I was talking to this kid today, um, and he was just like really excited about the intersection between AI and neuroscience, and he was like talking about all these focus projects he was gonna do and like like hackathons that um he was gonna he was gonna pursue with some of the other TKS people and like just just what he had, and I could just like see the fire. And it was so cool. And I that's why I take those calls because it's just like, I want to know about the kids that are in TKS because they ha- they all have that, basically. Mm. Um, and they do a really good job at sourcing kids that have that. Um, yeah. And like, I, I remember like thinking about it and then thinking about a lot of like startup founders that are older, like kind of like in their 20s. Mm. Um, and I really do think they, they get jaded by the tech world. And, yeah. and I think once you reach a certain level of, oh, like I've worked at X, Y, and Z company, or mm. I've interned for X, Y, and Z, or I've like, I've had an exit. A lot mm. of the time, it's like, you have to try to find that spark again. And yeah. I very rarely see the same level of enthusiasm in older founders, like I do in like, really young people that are just getting into tech. And yeah. maybe that's because there's just like the novelty wears off but I feel Mm. like I'm just like like maybe I'm just I don't know maybe I'm I'm just like crazy but but it's like like there's a select few people that I notice Mm. um uh including you that are just like very excited to talk about the things that are happening in tech or the things that are happening in the world and Mm. like you can just see that spark just light up every time they talk and Mm. that's not very common (laughs) And and yeah. I started to think about like, like, is it more that 
the tech world is like a really harsh environment and it's very anxiety inducing and like you have to put in a lot of hours to make things work a lot of the time and like yeah. that people don't have a good work-life balance so they just get bogged down way easier mm-hmm. is it more the fact that the world is ultimately more negative now or like we're we're shown way more negative instances of life and and that's kind of what bogs people down yeah but in both of those scenarios I feel like the people that are still excited about life and excited about like the things they're learning are some mm-hmm. of the like hardest working people I know. So yeah. like, I know that, <laughs> I know that they're like definitely in it. Like they're in the arena, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like they really are. And <laughs> like, but, but, and yet they still have this, like this vibrancy. And then mm-hmm. I'm like, is it because they don't expose themselves to negative things? Yeah. And it's it's less about that because they talk about those negative things but the way they talk about it is is like in light of x y and z and and why this means what it means and i i still don't know if i have like a a dedicated answer as to why those people are the way they are and why they are so it's less optimistic about the future and more just like um excited about all of the things that the world has to offer Ooh um yeah I I don't know it's like that whole polymath mindset I think where it's just like I want to be doing everything and anything and and it's it's captivating it really is because like Mm -hmm. when when those people talk it's just like I just want them to continue like keep Mm -hmm. just keep going for hours like I can listen all the time um Mm -hmm. but the majority of people aren't like that yeah so I I really I really don't know what that is the most prestigious people I know who've like made the most amount of money are a young kids who got something really right early on and they just kind of coast on it or two the most miserable people I know Mm -hmm. who have no lives outside of work and who have just like committed themselves to um their jobs entirely which for a lot of people I think that's what they want to do but I also think like I also think um realistically like more so in the tech industry we're seeing that and Scott Galloway says this a lot where he's like um idolatry of innovators has replaced religion like if you ever listen to the pivot Mm -hmm. podcast with Kara Swisher he's always like let me tell you about the idolatry of innovators um and so he believes that because our generations are moving away from religion that we're moving towards high agency people who have just this very powerful vision of the future and we trust them because they are these kind of like centralizing figures and I will expose Valkyrie she was at Moran's steakhouse she knew Moran before his steakhouse Uh, and if you don't know Moran's steakhouse was that viral TikTok steakhouse (laughs) um and I was reading comments about it and one of the interesting things like someone had a comment about why it went viral and someone was like because gen z is just so enamored by high agency people that go in that do these crazy things that it was like wow like i would have never thought to have done that um and i think i think part of it is just like you have to be um or like we want to be looking at high agency people who feel like the rules don't apply to them because it makes us feel like there's a chance for us to you know um but to the part there was something really interesting there and I totally forgot how to um respond to it or what my line of thought was oh it's that usually it's only the people that are crazy enough to do stuff um you like you have to have a little bit of delusion to do anything right like you have to have a little bit of delusion to be a YouTube star because you have to think that people care about what you say Uh, and sometimes they don't but for a percentage of people they do and then boom you're a YouTube influencer right and I feel like it's the same way for people in tech where like you have to have a lot of delusion that people want to use your products and they like you and they like want you to have like money and like all of these different things and I think some of people some people can keep that um like some people can take that with them and keep it as an active feature or some people like have to learn how to do that like I had that when I started out in the tech industry And I'm having to relearn that now and telling myself, like, this is what this YouTube channel is for. Like, I'm trying to build these things and I'm going to come here and I'm going to do storytelling about it. And I'm going to try to figure out how to, like, position it. But I feel like it's a combination of you are delusional 
and you have to um, work really hard to continue those dreams. And usually that's a habit or usually you will find ways to do that regardless. But I don't know. I do 100 percent agree that, you know, there is a lot of people who I've seen just get like the absolute shit kicked out of them, just like by the startup industry, by the tech industry, by working at Fangs. Like um, I know a lot of friends who did get laid off in like 2022 and 2023 and it was just you know it, it, they have definitely changed and they definitely don't see the industry the way that they used to so mm-hmm. yeah yeah the high agency thing is is definitely interesting because I yeah it's it really is captivating and and I think the people that that take those steps maybe that is it it's just like people that are daydreaming more people that spend more time being creative even in like the tech industry like maybe that just offers a level of of curiosity that that trickles down into other things um and maybe it's less about just like being creative and artistic and more just like like isolating your brain from your body like like I was listening to like a Huberman um podcast about like kind of like the the act of just like slowing your body but keeping your mind active so Mm -hmm. so like Like meditation, a lot of the time you think of it as like you're keeping your mind still and your body still. Um, And then with like exercise, some people think of that as a form of meditation. Your mind is like not very active, but like your body is. But there's very few people that think about like staying like just in one place and letting Mm -hmm. your mind just like like run and just think Mm -hmm. and like do whatever. And um, I think I think there's something to be said about about that um and and I've been trying that recently and I do and I do think it like hones in a certain level of oh like this is who I am and this is what I'm doing right now and um I don't know like they were talking about how like all like the greatest minds in in science and tech Mm -hmm. like um uh like Steve Jobs Albert Einstein like they both really talked about that whole idea of like mind active body still Mm. um and that's just interesting just from like a physiological standpoint of oh like like there's something to be said about just letting your brain run the same mm. thing with like like dreams it's like yeah if people don't sleep if people don't have dreams like even if you don't remember them like you're probably still just like letting your your brain wander and there's something a, like yeah oh, i'm sorry i had a dream that i hit you yesterday for a microwave at black friday because really? I was thinking about that Black Friday post of like, Black Friday deals are thirty percent off. What happened? We used to be a nation. People used to hit each other over the head for a microwave. People died. We used to be a country. <laughs> and I've been thinking about that so much. I'm like, yeah, Black Friday like sucks now. And so last night I had a dream that we were at Walmart and we were like trying to like run with all of our startup friends, and I saw this really good microwave price, and I killed you for it. So. I'm so sorry. Hey, but... Was it was it like did it work well? Like was the shelf life worth it? You know, I'm gonna be honest. I don't mean to disrespect your grave, but I don't think I used the microwave actually in my dream. I think I just yeah. go around, I think I should go around. And, and with that, I'm rest. out. And you're like See you're ya. like you're like you're resigning. I want all of your shares back. <laughs> You're like a DLA Piper on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. I I like I just dreams are like so I because I have like a lot of really just like weird ass dreams and it's just like letting your brain wander and I don't think like like the people that are like um oh like they they hold your like deepest darkest desires I think it was like Curtis Connor had this thing in his video where he was like last night I dreamed that my sock was like me and then I like murdered my sock (laughs) And so I like effectively murdered myself, and it was just like a like a what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> like, like what is my what is my uh, me being a sock and being murdered by myself? Like what does that mean? Nothing. That's that's the point. Nothing. <laughs> but but for some reason it does add something to uh, to mm-hmm. our like humanity. Like it yeah. does add something to our psyche to have those like weird mind active moments. True. I don't know. Now I'm just rambling, but, but I know yeah. I'm thinking about like when was the last time I felt like the most human connected, and it was, um, it was when I took 
shrooms alone without you um in our Oakland apartment and I was like I had this moment where I looked at my computer and I was opening up reddit and I'm like I am this is such like shroom shroom like mushroom brain only talk but I was like I am literally inside of a computer like I can run around in the internet like it was so crazy and I feel that way even when I like open my computer now is like I just see software as like little interconnected paths and more like a like a transportation system um as opposed to like an actual like this is just a website like I now see it more as like an overall connected um ecosystem but Mm -hmm. so I have an interesting question to ask you because I have this like older friend um and she's just pretty jaded uh about like her impact and her activism in general and um one of the really interesting things has been like we have these discussions where like with you I'm more of like the grounded pessimist but with her I'm actually the optimist and I'm actually like crazy and delusional Mm -hmm. um and I don't think that's a bad thing but like we've had these discussions and you know for my birthday like we went out and I was like yeah like here's just this kind of like just of what I want to do and her response was like well I don't necessarily know if you should try to do anything good for the world because bad is going to come and it's going to even it out and cancel it out and I've kind of been thinking about that and I've been like I think that's true to a degree but I was also like it made me think about like what person do I want to be because when she said that I got this deep indescribable sadness and I don't think it's because that's what she believes or because like that idea is like I don't think she was like out of place with saying it but I just think for me the idea of having a life where I feel as though I cannot make change is the saddest possible thing that I can think of Mm -hmm. um and so my question to you is like would you rather like would you rather live in delusion um and believe that you can change stuff or would you rather be like cognizant and realistic and think that you can't like if I'm not saying like either two is correct but I'm just saying Mm -hmm. like would you choose the possibility of delusive um high agency or would you choose grounded um reality because that was a real like reflection moment for me which is like do I really want to be this pessimistic person who doesn't believe I can do anything or do I want to try to do more high agency stuff and for me it was like even though I am like kind of deluding myself a little bit I want to pretend that I can do all of these different high agency things even if I don't because the idea of thinking that I couldn't ever would be too sad like I would rather live in my delulu soup the rest of my life so I wanted to throw that too yeah I mean so and, and I was thinking about this more from just like um kind of like the I don't know how this is gonna sound but like there's this like comedian named Shane Gillis and he has this whole bit about like like down syndrome um and like uh, this will make sense in a second but but it's basically like he's talking about how he's like you know if if you couldn't tell from looking at me yes I have some friend family that has down syndrome and like he mm-hmm. talks about like this whole thing about like yeah like you guys are on antidepressants and they're on fucking Capri Suns like like he was basically talking about just like how how like they're just like happy all the time and they don't have yeah. very much that really like dampens them mm-hmm. and I started thinking about it and I talked with my dad about it and, and it's this idea of like would you rather like be in just like a baseline state of like good um mm-hmm. and like not be able to feel any extreme or yeah. would you rather be able to experience the extreme moments of happiness love everything but have to take the bad like like depression anxiety heartbreak all that that comes with with living um with living life and I it kind of also brings me back to my mom a little bit because I her her doctor and I will shit on this doctor because shit on him is like literally awful um but but like when my mom got cancer um her doctor was like was like um oh like oh like you get a birthday like basically being like oh like you get to live long enough to see your birthday and I during that time I I kept thinking about like would I rather have a doctor that was like super realistic like that and just being like like you're gonna die in six months or would I rather have the doctor that gave me hope and said we're gonna try this and like 
like you're gonna make it and like all these things even if I was gonna die anyways and I really did reflect on it and I would choose hope and those extremes every fucking time and like it's it's kind of along the same line of like I know I'm gonna be really sad if this didn't doesn't work out but I would rather choose the extreme highs of of feeling that love and feeling hope and feeling positivity and Mm. have that as like some sort some sort of clutch um Mm. crutch that's what I meant crutch (laughs) um Mm. as opposed to just having like a baseline of like things will happen life will move like whatever because I was able to feel so much more happiness for my mom in her in her last like months as opposed to just like feeling like my mom's gonna die my mom's gonna die like like I'm losing my mom like and I was able to feel like oh shit like celebrate the small wins like all these things I feel like it's much harder to do that and maybe other people that have had like people that they've lost to to illnesses like that like maybe they would understand um more than like the average person but it's I I was much more excited about the small things like that whereas mm-hmm. if I was just living under this guise of like yeah like like she's gonna if I was living under this realistic guise of like yeah. yeah she's gonna die I would not be able to like look at her and think about anything else other than I'm losing my mom this year you know what I mean so it's this like I would much rather feel all of the extremes and live in this like delusional fantasy of like everything will work out because yeah. it gives me more motivation to try if I if mm-hmm. I think that I'm never going to make any change if I'm never going to like finish a project that I start or amount to anything because everything's going to equal out in the end like first off you don't know how it's going to equal out like <laughs> like me succeeding in one angle and then having some shit like suck in another angle Mm. Like, yes like maybe in terms of like quantity or quality they will balance out mm. but how do I know that like the good things are necessarily not going to be worth the bad things you know what I mean like I would okay. much rather take that chance of yeah like we we succeed with the startup and we solve a problem for millions of people and I feel like I've paid my fucking price <laughs> like I feel like like I'm waiting for it to balance out right now you know what I mean? <laughs> And, you know, it's a, and, but it's like, I never would have thought that that would be the way that things go down. And I, yeah. and I wouldn't have wanted to know that because like, that's not, that's not how balance is achieved. Like, like if I knew everything that was going to happen, there would never be any balance because it would already be manipulated by the future. Um, yes. So, and I think that's also a reason why I am so just like optimistic, like overly, like, I, I think everything will work out because mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it would like suck to think differently. And and I and I talk to people, I think I've talked to you about this, about like people that do startups are are a little insane all the time. Like like you have yeah. to be a little crazy to be like, yeah, I'm dropping everything to build a business of my own and get VC funding and try to make this a billion dollar company. Like just like the simple when when my first like real like boyfriend told me that he wanted to be a billionaire. That was like a, like, if you tell people that and it's just like a, oh my God, like, really? Like, <laughs> like what makes you think that? And, and, and so like, you have to be a little crazy, but yeah. I think there's like a level of just like delusion, like you said, that comes to being in startups that, yeah. that like makes it so that you look past all of like the things that will balance out mm. because it's it's gonna work out in your favor you know what I mean because yeah. like we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't if we didn't think we could actually make a change and that's what's so cool about it you know yeah I just think like honestly <laughs> I'm thinking back to like my childhood and I was like I was like dude if I thought that my childhood was gonna be what it was growing up I probably would have like I did try to kill myself actually not that I probably would have tried to kill myself like the moments where I thought the future was terrible like did not did not bode well for me and so I think for me like that's kind of my kind of like reality is like I just have to delusionally I have to 
delusionally believe that it's going to be better because if it's not um somebody <laughs> called the suicide hotline somebody yeah. get somebody get um somebody get I'm trying to think somebody get Nancy Pelosi to come give a speech <laughs> but, like yeah because like it just sucks and I think especially for our generation like it, you say that we're living in one of the best times possible to be a woman. I 100% agree. Like when my dad was born, women weren't even allowed to have credit cards. Like, yeah. and if you still look at the scape of startups today, like there's very few women who are even at the top of like bank companies. And there's not even a woman on the new open AI board. Like not that it's like, and I know people are going to be like, oh, well, they shouldn't choose diversity. They should choose like who has the best kind of like credentials. Um, But like, what I'm meaning to say is like there's just like I don't know our future just looks so scary especially with climate change um and especially with everything going on and I think like if I wasn't delusional that would just be a terrible like terrible way to live terrible way to think and I think partially that's why Gen Z has such a terrible mental health crisis like with social media and with everything is it's like we've been stripped for our political agency we've been told that we have a terrible future and we're seeing how that's played out for millennials and a lot of them have turned out into disney adults and that doesn't <laughs> look appealing to us yeah. um and so i think like there is something to be said about like delusionality is the key to happiness in some way you know like you have to kind of like delude yourself into thinking like this current moment is like what it is and like I have a little bit of a say and like I can do xyz and that's really what I had to do to like get out of my like family living situation and when I did and it still sucked I was like I'm so glad I didn't know what the future would bring because if I did like I would have stopped yeah. and um like sometimes I, or I read this poetry quote and it's like one of the best things that you can do for yourself is forget like memories or like forget like the pain because that's the only way you're going to be able to try again is like if you just keep on like processing and like beating the past with a stick and like that's kind of what I'm trying to do like this is my fifth or sixth startup that I've ever worked on and every day I'm like oh my gosh like what if like this happens or like what if xyz happens and I have to be like shut the fuck up and like, <laughs> yeah. just enjoy it and try to cu- try to calm down mm-hmm. um because like that delusionality is like that's what's that's what that's what's it and like I feel like that's what the young founders have that a lot of the jaded people in tech do is like experience wears away your delusion but you got to keep it going you got to yeah. keep it going <laughs> yeah literally um, I ramble yeah yeah and I I think like there there's ways to replicate that um mm. where where i feel like like a lot of people kind of just stop trying but it's yeah. it's i feel like it's very i won't say it's easy cuz everyone's going to be different but it's mm. it's relatively simple to set up a system for you to at least try and experiment with that can help you get into a different kind of like scope of like whether you're positive or like viewing things from a more realistic lens it's mm-hmm there are tools and and like i i think about like we're living in a relatively negative age in the new in like the news and like media and we're exposed to a lot of shit uh especially like the gen z kind of demographic of like you need to fix everything that <laughs> that older generations cause and it's that yeah. like anxiety right um, oh my gosh yeah and, it, and and at the same time it's like yeah but you also have to be like realistic or you have to be positive about x y and z and there's and there's ways that gen z can embrace more of like the positive aspects of of the scenarios that i think really yeah. do lend themselves to why things actually get done um and and that that's a journey in and of itself like, like it took me a long time to get to the point where like i was confident enough to make those steps like it was literally mm-hmm. me walking like three or four hours a day just talking to myself to figure out like like why why do I feel the way that I do and like what is the cause of it and like why do I you know why do I do x y and z and it was only because of that alone time that I was able to be like that I was able to like gain a consciousness almost like like Mm -hmm. I I was not really experiencing much before 16 um and and so you know it's it's kind of just like 
It's interesting. And and there are ways to work around things. And mm-hmm. that's a very like simplistic way of viewing it. And that's just kind of what what I see and like what works mm-hmm. for me and what has worked for other people I know in the past. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a believer that actually most things are exceptionally simple just in terms of like my mental health because I used to be like oh my gosh like there's so much complexity and there's so much layers to it and really I was just trying to create exceptions to the rules so that I could feel as though my pain was justified in some way and I could be like oh well actually like it's not that simple because like xyz and then I kind of have to like press the therapy button in my mind and I have to be like no like it is just like this simple and the reality of the situation does not match the emotional reaction to the situation and sometimes there's just a gap in between them and you just have to kind of like let it breathe and try to like even it out in its own way so that's something I like to do because I'm literally like I'm now like I'm a golden retriever like I have to like I'm very basic bitch TikTok it girl like I get up (laughs) I walk to the coffee shop I come back I do all my chores on one day I like I have to like get into this routine that I always was like that's not going to fix anything that's not going to make me feel like an adult and now I'm like now I'm doing it and I feel like an adult and actually I was not an exception to the rule and I would have just you know really fared a lot better if I just um acknowledged and admitted the fact that I'm a lot like everybody else in a lot of different ways um yeah so I don't know yeah and and like it it sounds so funny when I like say it out loud but like my dad growing up like especially when we hit puberty Mm -hmm. I would be like crying about something or I'd like be getting in an argument and like this sounds so patronizing um but it but it wasn't it was genuinely my dad asking like like are you like hormonal right now like like basically Mm -hmm. being like are you on your period right now (laughs) and if any other man would have said that to me like it would have been like a excuse me um but genuinely, yeah. like, my dad just, like, posing that question to me is, like, oh, it literally is as simple as I'm a woman that is menstruating, and everything seems, like, such a big deal to me right now, and I can, like, look outside of myself and be, like, you know what, yeah, like, I think I think it is literally just my period, <laughs> and, yeah. like, it, it's stuff like that where it's, like, it's, it's so simple, and you don't want mm-hmm. it to be that simple because, like you said, like, you want to be the exception to the rule, um, mm-hmm. but like but sometimes it is and 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 the uh, the ability to recognize that is like something that I am just so happy that my parents instilled in me early just being like it maybe you're just bleeding (laughs) maybe (laughs) it's literally just like it's just that so yeah I mean one of my favorite like memes is that Garfield image where it's just Garfield and it's like you you are not immune to propaganda and I think about that in relation to companies like I look at companies and I'm like oh my god I want that so bad and I'm like you are not immune to marketing Mm -hmm. because I I really want that stupid $300 selkie puff dress like look it up it's these beautiful model s girls looking so Victorian serving cunt like very beautiful yeah and I'm like I'm like do I really I'm like I have to ask myself now is I'm like do you want the emotion that you think this product will bring or do you actually want the product like if this product was sold at Target would you still purchase it or like if you found it at Goodwill like no tags would you still buy it and a lot of times the answer is no and I had this like moment and I was like I love Glossier so much like I always want to buy Glossier uh and I've had that for about six or so years and then you know I'm an adult I control my finances now. I opened the Glossier website and I was like, go ham, girl. And then I was like, I don't really desire any of these things. I just desired feeling like I had something in relation with a lot of women my age. Mm -hmm. And like, that was it. And like, I don't actually like the product. I just like not feeling alien and weird uh, within my own demographic. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think there's always these like, there's always these layers and sometimes the answer is a lot more simple than you think um and I heard somebody refer to Elon Musk I think it was Kara Swisher and she was like he's just like a kid who had like two terrible parents and then he got a god complex and wants to save the world and I was like that's a little simplifying and then I was like no it's actually correct (laughs) yeah like it's right um so I don't know I tried to take the most simple but respectful view of things because oftentimes like you know nobody's really as complicated as they like to 
say they are yeah so. yeah and, and it's also this like and, and I think about this quite a lot when I'm like shopping for things and I'm sure you've like experienced this before of like like do you really want the the clothes the item of clothing or do you just want the body of the woman wearing it you know it's a it's this like <laughs> it's like it's like <laughs> I'm like looking at all these pictures and I'm like oh that's cute and then I'm like I- but I would never if I tried that on in the store and it didn't look like the girl wearing it, I would want to kill myself. Like, it literally- I was just thinking like, that. Oh genuinely, because, and that's how they get you. That's why we have, like, fast fashion. That's why we have all the things that we have. Like, it, it just recently, I was, like, looking at myself in, like, the, the mirror, like, trying on clothes, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, this fits me. But if this was on another woman, I probably wouldn't have reached for it. It's only because it's on my body that I can actually visualize it properly and actually say, mm-hmm. yes, I want to buy that without yeah. any form of like delusion of, oh, I'm going to look like how that person looks in it. And and, and they really get you. I, I will say they've got they me. <laughs> ah, they get you so much, honestly. That's like, and I try to, I try to mostly thrift shop now slash yeah, like, do other stuff but I was on dolls kill mm. and I was like what if I just became this like hyper pop goth baddie and then I was like no you just want to look like a model for dolls kill like you need to literally get your shit yes. together so yeah. I don't know those are my thoughts yeah but do you have any topics of conversation would you like to continue this because we have a minute um I'll be honest I'm like starving right now <laughs> it's <laughs> like it's like late um but <laughs> Like we should do this more often. I like we love should. talking about this stuff. Like I do too. It's just great. I think <laughs> I think this is really fun. I love talking to you about this. Maybe we can do like one weekend we have Roblox, another weekend like informal last video podcast next week yeah. in Roblox. Because I want to talk to you about Emma Chamberlain. I want. Oh my god! To I just listened to her um, like unfiltered conversation from Colin and Samir. You should listen to that if you haven't. I will listen. I'm. Is this the one where she says she hasn't checked her bank account in three years? I I'm not all the way through it. Maybe. Okay. Okay. But I will through. listen. I'm so yeah. interested. But we have topics. I love you. Thank you for talking. Um, I appreciate you so much. And everybody, say hello to Valkyrie. Yeah. We love Valkyrie. Hello, people. mighty people. subscribers. Oh. Like, smash that like button. Share, like, and subscribe. Share repost i don't even know every time you watch this video and you don't press the like button i leave this bear outside in the rain for another day (laughs) (laughs) just abuse